Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Nikki, for your amazing talent. I am not musically inclined and usually am in, in awe related to the creative arts, so I appreciate what you share with us today. Thank you. It is a pleasure and an honor to be with you today. For the past four years, I found myself more often than not sitting where you're sitting on a beautiful Thursday morning. I try to make it a habit of carving out the time in my schedule to listen to a fellow community member share their thoughts. And it's special that an institution sets aside a Tuesday and Thursday time frame for us to pause during a busy day. And more than once, I've thought about what I would say when I got up here, and now's my chance, so I hope I don't blow it. Uh, today, I'll be talking to you about an enduring question that often comes into my mind. Why should I bother? Interestingly, I was asked this question two days ago when I encouraged a student to come to talk today. I, asked, I was asked, Steve, why should I bother coming to Newman Lumen? Well, I see the student in the audience today, so <laughs> ho ho hopefully he has the answer. Now, seriously, I, I think about the question and never more so than this past summer. Let me share with you a story. In June, I had the honor of attending a week-long social justice training seminar in Springfield, Massachusetts. This was one of the most intense things that I have ever done. I was surrounded by 40 plus other professionals who were there to explore the various dimensions of social justice. The group was diverse and challenging and wicked smart, to use a Massachusetts phrase, and I was intimidated. I'm a pretty introverted guy, but for the five days that I was there, I was totally inside my head questioning everything that I had done and everything that I was going to do related to my various privileges and dismantling institutional privileges and oppressions. More than once during this week, I asked myself, why should I bother? You see, I am privileged to be able to ask this question when it relates to pretty much anything. A vast preponderance of my social identities, I stand before you as a white male, represent dominant groups, which I don't have to think about a majority of the time. It wasn't until graduate school that I was challenged on my dominant social identities. And that is where I learned about the subtleties of the isms, racism, sexism, heterosexism, classism, etc. From my perspective, rarely is it easy to see that an action is discriminatory. Most of the time, it's difficult to see isms directly in action. Singular acts of discrimination are symptomatic of a larger problem, and seeing the complexities are challenging. Members of privileged groups tend to focus on individual acts, victims, how far we've come in intent. Members of marginalized groups focus on patterns, systems and cultures, how far we need to go and impact. But I have come to understand that we are all connected through this world because any harm to an individual is a directly harm to our broader community. It may not directly affect me, but it does affect the communities in which I live and work. I recognize now that many of my reflections during my time at the Social Justice Conference were related to how uncomfortable I felt. I had the ability to leave the conference whenever I wanted and return to my more comfortable way of being. This was just not the case for a vast majority of my colleagues who were also present. They couldn't ask that question because to many of them, they didn't have a choice. By the end of the extremely challenging five days, I had reconfirmed my commitment to social justice values. There are everyday problems that, we can change, that can be changed if we just stop and recognize the privileges exist within our society that benefit majority identities. In my opinion, there's no reason why women do, should not earn the same amount of money for the same job as men. In my opinion, privileges given to any committed relationship between two individuals should not, be give, should not be given special consideration over other groups. And yes, that racism still exists today in profound and sinister ways. Let me share with you a specific example. August 9th, 2014, this is the day and its aftermath will remain with me forever as this was the day that Michael Brown was killed by Officer Darren Wilson in Ferguson, Missouri. What first started out as a singular questionable act in Missouri quickly became national news. Visions of police and riot gear quelling protests caught many people, and of particular, many white people, off guard. 
There are so many layers to this event that's, that seem to rip a metaphorical band-aid off race relations in St. Louis and in this country. Passions are high and are still high given the situation. And I don't believe that things will be healed anytime soon. The killing of Michael Brown flooded back memories of my social justice seminar. Here I am six weeks removed from this profound transformational experience where I was committed to fighting the isms and promoting social justice values. And here was my first big trigger moment. The moment where I'm angry, where I've viewed a national event through the new, my new social justice lenses. I see the inequity and I see the response. And I wonder how is it possible for Ferguson, the broader St. Louis community and our nation will come together. I try to wrap my brain around the event and I say to myself, why should I bother? Bam, my privilege rushes back. I have feelings of hopeness, hopelessness and being alone and self-doubt and worthiness. I say to myself, maybe I'm not cut out to do this social justice stuff. This questioning hurts. It literally hurts. Fast forward to today, as now I've thought more, about deep, more deeply about the enduring question I present to you today. Whenever, I, whenever you ask yourself, why should I bother, I want you to recognize this is a tremendous opportunity. You are questioning your world, your morals, your values, what you stand for, what your privileges are. And I see this as a very good thing. In this world, we celebrate certainty and confirmation. We see ourselves as definitive, solid beings rather than evolving. And rarely do, do we celebrate questioning our own morals, values, integrity, and what we stand for. So part of the reason I am here is to say, yes, it's OK for you to question. I believe this, is, this questioning can lead to two different paths. One, where we change our course to head in a different direction, or two, where we confirm our intentions towards a particular end. If we blindly travel our lives without questioning, I believe we're doing ourselves a disservice. If our involvement in an activity does not meet, not meeting our ends, we should be asking, why should I bother? And if you reconfirm yourself in this end, you are a much stronger position. When we make this choice, however, I think we have to recognize that this is a decision that also has many layers. To make a choice, yes, I should bother, is relevant for our future identity. You are making a stand for something, a conscious decision to pursue a certain path. You should be internalizing this decision, letting it become a part of who you are. You must not only commit now towards that cause, but you are committing for the future towards that cause as well. Now when I think about the question of why I should bother, I take a much larger view of this question. I, just, I don't just think about it in my individual way, but I'm thinking about it in a much broader context of who I am, who I am in this world, and how do I want to be authentic to what I value. I think about the kind of world in which I want to live and also the world I want my kids to grow up in. I think about how singular individual acts can lead to great change how one individual can make a tremendous impact. I also think about how a group of individuals can come together to make even more significant change. It reminds me of one of my favorite quotes by Margaret Mead. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. So the next time you ask yourself, why should I bother, take a look inside and ask yourself, is this the world I want to live in? The answer to that question will probably help answer why you should bother. It's been an honor to share with you my thoughts about this enduring question. So next time you think to yourself, why should I bother, I want you to acknowledge the privilege you have in asking that question, but appreciate that you have a choice. I want you to recognize that whatever decision you make affects your future identity, and that singular decisions determine who you are. And I want you to know that you will probably be asking yourself this question in the not too distant future. Thank you very much for your time today.